There we go. So glad that people could join us from the uh, from the Growing North chat today. And this is kind of the little extension, nice little bit of a live chat for those people who are a still awake and want to join us and get to meet some people. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to hear things and talk about things when you're actually live. And this way it gives you a chance to ask a few more of your questions because I know that we throw a whole pile of questions out to the audience during the chats, but this time you actually get to ask your own, which is really nice. Lots of fun. And we have Bren joining us today. Bren, do you want to do your introduction? Hey, yes. Um, oops, I got a little feedback there. You getting that? Okay. Not really. So, okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm Brad, um, living and growing in Zone 5B, Ohio, and um, I'm anxious to start more seeds. I've actually, I've been start, I've been growing seeds just continuously here since October, but I have that nice little uh, geodesic biodome in my yard, so I'm just constantly putting stuff in there, and um, and now I'm starting indoors more, like tomatoes and things, so can't wait to talk about that. Are you going to be able to plant those out? Um, what time? When can you actually plant those out? Well, <coughs> you know, it's very important to follow that little USDA map, definitely, so you know when to start your seeds and to put them outdoors. But see, now what I'm doing with these, and I always say it wrong, and plus I can't read my handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be a good doctor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, Trenzo, does that ring a bell? It's a variety. I found the variety, the only variety I could find in my stash that had, um, for containers. So this was recommended a, a tomato for containers. So what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to start them. And once they get growing good here in my, I've got some LED lights in my office here. Um, I'm actually going to repot them and stick them out in the dome since they're container varieties. So I can start them a little early, right? I hope. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see. Yeah, absolutely. I'm and sure that, you could put the other varieties into like a larger pot in your dome as well, just to get them a little bit more real light, a little bit more um, everything else before you actually plant them in the ground too. True. I, I'm sure you could do that. Yeah, I usually start my other, I usually start my other varieties. Well, I watch people like uh, Delta Gardener just popped in. I usually watch her when she's showing all these tomato plants that are starting to come up. That's usually when I go, oh crap, I gotta get those tomatoes. <laughs> going right <laughs> so, that's how See, i do you that, hear that? <laughs> you, you're the one who, who gets Bren reminded it's like oh oh right right i'm supposed to be doing something yeah yeah works out great <laughs> <laughs> we got quite a crew in here oh i keep seeing uh chili pepper i love that name that that is cool i, I do i love that too especially considering you're like right way up there in the north too so okay i just i love that Oh, that's cute. Uh, chili pepper. So he actually means yeah. burr, maybe? <laughs> yeah, I, I believe that's what she means. Yeah. Awesome. So, wow, this is great. We got quite a few people in here. I hope we get some good questions. And I want to learn some stuff from everybody. You know, I always learn something new on Twitter. Yeah, so any, anyone who's new on Blab, if you want to ask a question, um, you can just use a little slash followed by Q mm -hmm. and then add your, type your question in there. And uh, then we'll be able to pop it right up into the chat here so everyone can see it and read it. And and then we'll, we'll try our best to answer it. <laughs> yeah. Brent, Brent will probably have some pretty good answers for you. But um, for, I'm going to guess almost all of the people like me who grow in the North, you're pretty much, if you want to do tomatoes or peppers or a whole pile of almost anything, you're going to be growing your seeds indoors before you can actually plant them outside. Yeah. Even if you have like a, a nice little long, high tunnel or anything else, it's still not quite warm enough. Yeah. And um, yeah, you usually you start yours. Um, you start yours indoor. Well, you have you don't have a lot of time for your tomatoes to actually do their not thing. Yeah. I have ninety frost free days, but the first thirty of those, the soil is still cold. Wow. So the tomatoes don't really care much for that. No, I would almost, I mean, like last year we had a really weird year and like my heirlooms, <coughs> my heirlooms didn't do very well, which was kind of a shame because I actually planted them in this big area that I'm doing. Like I'm experimenting with a no-till kind of, I don't even know if I'm doing that right, <laughs> but it just, it didn't get hot enough until the very end, right? 
And so I really like my container, the container uh, varieties, because that way I can bring them indoors and they kind of finish up, right? Yeah, exactly. Like I, you've probably seen in my my greenhouse, I have a whole pile of peppers in, in containers. Exactly the same thing, because yeah. that way I actually get to extend them a bit. Mm -hmm. So we have a question here um, from a chili pepper. <laughs> Am I the only one who always feels behind when seeding? Um, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I always feel like I'm scrambling or I've forgotten it. And then I freak out because I, I felt like I was behind. And I started everything and then I realized, oh, I started it too soon. Now I'm going to be fighting with things that are indoors and getting too leggy for too long. Yeah. So I, I end up with both problems. I, I fight myself all the time. And then the, I get it right. I know I'm like, okay, I got it timed exactly right this year. And then the frosts are late. Or something happens. <laughs> it just doesn't matter what you do. Right. <laughs> and then I always get, you know, you always get halfway into the season. I mean, at least I do. And then I see somebody sharing something that's blooming. And then I forgot, oh, man, I bought those seeds. <laughs> and they're, like, in my desk or something. Do you ever do that? I thought you had, like, those really nice seed keeper companies. I do. Seed oh, God, do you not put them in there? <laughs> I'm not going to pan around and let you see my office. <laughs> it's like it's crazy 18 hours of, i've got this question from scott how does 18 hours of sunlight help you through pam um well it helps with my mood that's for sure but um if the soil's still a bit cold the roots aren't getting too much benefit from it um because the air temperature still i mean around i'm gonna say 10 celsius so i'll let you fight that one out yeah. as to what 10 celsius is <laughs> um but the the soil's still cold and the air isn't really all that hot until midsummer so it takes a long time to warm up yeah a frost goes six six feet down where i am so it takes a long time for that soil to warm up yeah sometime i'd like to get delta gardener would be fun in here to she, she brought up um the hardening off thing and then you know of course you're talking about it yeah i still have a hard time with that i don't quite um i think i'm doing it right because i don't really lose a lot of my seeds but i'm not sure what exactly that is hardening off um the plants you've grown indoors i can i can help out with that for people who aren't sure what hardening off is mm -hmm. and uh delta gardener's right it could take a week to harden plants off um so you have your nice happy little seedlings that have been in there nice coddled warm no uv no heavy winds no direct rain beautiful you know utopia of indoors where no bugs no nothing <laughs> exactly. Plants don't wear coats. Um, so they've got to <laughs> grow their virtual coat, if you want to call it, when you put them outside. Okay. So you take them outside on a sunny, warm day, not too much wind. You leave them outside for a while. You bring them back in overnight. And you do this over about a week of putting them outside, letting them get exposed. The very first day, you're not going to put them in full sun. Sure. Too much UV is going to burn them. Right. Um, you're not going to put them out on like a torrential raining day it's too much you're not gonna put them on a super windy day um so you just you kind of get them accustomed to the fact that you're going to be living outside here now get your coat on <laughs> and um after about a week they should be strong enough each day you'll probably leave them out a little bit longer and eventually you'll be leaving them out overnight things like that until they're good and strong okay and they'll get a darker green color to them usually too as they get a little bit of a cuticle on their uh on their leaves and on their stem and as they thicken up those those uh cell walls okay and yeah a chili pepper says also kill plants because the day got too hot while i was at work which is oh, exactly yeah. it. the first few days you put them in a part sun part shade yeah. because that's exactly what happens they're so delicate that you put them in full uv it's like a Canadian going to Florida in January. We have no, oh. <laughs> we have no suntan protection. We go down into these places and we just fry. We we look bright red. Yeah, and you can you can pick us out right away. We're the ones without the, the winter coat. Yeah, <laughs> you see a lot of Ohioans down there right now like that too. It's, we make everybody have to wear sunglasses because white. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly it. It's like we're our little glowing yeah. thing. <laughs> that's you basically think about your plants like that yeah that's what your plants are when they go outside so you got to get them uh get them ready for a suntan get them ready for you know some heavy wind yeah i love that a chili pepper i only had to learn that lesson once yes and it's a really sad lesson because you've planted yeah. these seeds and you've watered them and you've nurtured them and you've thought about all these tomatoes and these what peppers that you're going to get at the end of the season mm-hmm 
And then you go to work, you're doing what you're supposed to do. You're hardening them up and you come home and they're dead because you put them in the wrong spot. Yeah, that happens in a lot of different, I mean, like last year, my biggest devastation was I worked so hard with learning how to grow things in the LED lights, which is, it's kind of challenging. I mean, because you got, you got to really pay attention to how many hours you have it on. You have to have air moving. It's got to be warm. I mean, there's still a little bit to it, right? But I was just yeah. so excited. I got my broccoli. I had this new variety artwork. It was like, you know, it looks so beautiful. And, and you know, I was careful to bring it out, you know, which I kind of hardened harden off, but not really knowing it's called that. <laughs> anyways, the rabbits ate it, or I know they were rabbits. I didn't see them, but I know it was rabbits, and they gnawed it right down, and there went my baby seeds, you know, and my plant. That was sad. And you got all these hopes for them and these dreams and the it recipe you can use them in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So. Oh, winter sowing, yeah. Uh, Delta Gardener just mentioned winter sowing. That's exactly another thing. It's the plants naturally do it. I can only winter sow with a very few things um, where I am um, because the grow season is just not long enough for some of them, even if I winter sowed them. Okay. So I do have to pre-start and go through the whole hardening off process. I will say the greenhouse makes that easier, yeah. the hardening off process. I could put them in the greenhouse with that gentle fan, start the hardening off. They're getting some stronger sun than what they would. They're getting some more temperature extremes than what they would indoors. So I only have a very light bit of hardening off left to do um, if I put them in the greenhouse for a little while. So that is one way to speed it up. And you've got that benefit too, Bren, you could do that. As long as you've got like a uh, fan or something mm -hmm. moving the air or rent windows you open up that's gonna move air through. Yeah. My fans were doing pretty good in there. <laughs> yeah, so you, you could do that. So I'm gonna just kind of jump us back. We, we titled the blab here, Seed Starting, What Supplies Do You Need? Which is kind of an extension of the chat we just had on Twitter, which was, a really good chat. A lot of people were chiming in, lots of good ideas, lots of good thoughts. Um, and I think everybody knows the basics of what you need. You need soil, water, air, and some seeds. Um, but there's a few finer points to think about when you're doing that. The thing is you don't need, you, you don't need everything fancy. And that's what some people get scared at. They're like, I'm never going to start a seed. I'm not going to try because I don't have this and this and this and this and this and this because I've read these books and I went on the internet and you said, said you need the seed starting tray and the internet said you need these lights. And the internet said you need all of this. And um, I'm just going to say you don't. I'm pretty sure Bren is going to agree with me. You don't need that if you're just kind of starting out seed starting. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You can, I was just sharing before we, uh, we went live here. To, can I show my little micro greenhouse thing? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think it's awesome. Here's my little. <laughs> so I'm like double recycling here. I use this is I think the second year for this um, lettuce container that um, I mean, come on, face it. We eat a lot of lettuce, right? It's kind of hard to grow like completely. A burger is not a burger without a piece of lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So anyways, you want the lid because that's because <coughs> um, especially um, in the next week here, like next week, I'm going to be at a show and I won't be here to water these, but I timed it just right that, you know, these are just starting out and um, if you put enough water in here, it, it kind of with the lid on it, it keeps it moist. So you don't have to worry about watering it. Right. Does that make yeah. sense? And then so. Oh, for some things, yeah. Yeah, for some things, right. So, and then these little things, I'm fairly new to these. Actually, I had my uh, daughter collect these at her work because they have one of those little uh, Keurig machines or the K-cups, you know? And so I said, just put a little container next to the coffee maker and have people throw their little K-cups in there. So we did that and she brought them home and I kind of washed them up. But then I thought, do I really need to wash them up if it's just plain coffee grounds on there, right? I mean, the scraps. It's not bad. Nothing happened bad. So, but <laughs> anyways, you punch a hole in the bottom of the K-cup, fill it with soil, seed soil, and put your seed in there. It worked really good last year. Yeah, no, it looks like it would, and it doesn't take up nearly as much space as uh, some other things. No, and then, you know, so last year I primarily did – um Oh, my um, Cardinal Climber. I really like that. Is that how you say that? Cardinal Climber? It's got just a beautiful bloom on that 
vine and the hummingbirds and um, other, uh, boy, my brain's not working tonight. <laughs> Pollinators, love those. So all, all I did once the plant was big enough and it was time to put it outside, you just kind of push the cut. I mean, you just kind of push on it a little and it, the soil pops right out, it pops right out the whole little root bound type thing. Well, don't let it get too root, root bound, root, root bound. Scott's laughing at me right now. I know it. <laughs> but there it is. So that's all you do. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's just, that's cheap. I mean, I didn't even buy the coffee stuff. And I've used these, like I said, this, this container, I think, is on two years. And this is my um, second year also using the K-Cups. Yeah. And uh, it's yeah. a great way of recycling. I love it. You don't even need to spend a whole pile of money. You just ask yeah. someone for their old lettuce container. You yeah. ask someone to collect the old K cups and <laughs> you buy, buy some soil. <laughs> and really, I mean, people are thinking that they need to spend all of this money. And because, like Bren said, it's like it's a little mini self contained greenhouse, put yeah. it on a self facing window. Mm -hmm. It's going to generate a little bit of extra heat. Um, no heat mat needed then either. I right. mean, it, it's a great thing. It's recycled, it's cheap. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you don't need all of these expensive, wonderful, fancy looking toys that, you know, are nice, but not really needed. Right. And so, well, we had a few more people in the room, I think. Yeah. So feel free, um, slash Q, ask questions. Um, if not, I'm going to show you. Can I show you another fun thing? This was fun. Yeah, you brought props. Show props. I did. That. Okay, and I'll try not to move too quick so you can see it with the camera. Okay, and by the way, if you like what we're saying, click on our faces so we get some claps here on Blab. I like that. I haven't been promoting that this year, and I, I had, I was on a chat earlier today, and I feel bad. I actually looked at the numbers. I'm like, oh man, I like finished behind everybody. They have more claps than me <laughs> or props. It's just so silly, but I don't know. Silly things are delightful, aren't they? <laughs> they are. They are. And I'm, I'm going to be a jerk here because now I've got the mini cam running, so I'm going to throw pictures up. Oh, yay. Okay, that's um, good. I'm going to be a jerk here and okay. throw pictures up. You're going to put the pictures first, or can I show my next? No, no, show your stuff. I'm trying okay. to see what I've got here. I'll try to keep my story kind of short, but it's hard because this one involves my little helper, who's my, she's four now, my four-year-old niece. We did this little fun recycling project when she was not, she was just one, almost one and a half when we started. So we started collecting the toilet paper rolls and she actually used to keep them and she'd play with them. It sounds so funny. And she'd use them. They were called aha. As you go, oh, uh -huh. right. Okay. So anyhow, <laughs> what you're going to do with these is you can start seeding these toilet paper rolls. So I just have another little recycled tray here. I think this had mushrooms in it. Uh, from the uh, grocery store. So you just take your toilet paper rolls and we kind of like break the end down a little. Like it's easier to load the uh, seed starter mix in that if you just kind of bend it in, right? I left a hole, but anyhow. Yeah, so you just do that. And then you're gonna, you can fit like five of them in one of these little trays. And then you just put your soil in there and drop the seed. And the kids have such a fun time because they're also, you know, they're learning to recycle. Like, wow, you can use this for things. And and then watching the seed grow, you know, so they get to learn learn a couple of cool things with that. So, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's fun for kids too, because it's like crafting, it's recycling, it's, yep. it's seed, it's everything, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there's a whole more, pile more lessons than just uh, seeds, than just seed starting in there. Yeah. yeah. You've got recycling, you've got crafting, you've got, right. you know, resourcefulness, you've got, you know, ton, tons of lessons right right in there, one little thing. So we did have a question here. It looks like uh, Delta Gardner started answering already. Does everyone here plant in soil? Um, I do plant in soil. I don't have a lot of room to continually move things around. So um, I plant in soil so I don't have to disturb the roots as much once I start actually moving them around or uh, potting them up. Right. But um, I don't think everyone does. Hmm. And Happy Dance Farm here says, I have excellent results using coconut coir for seed starting. Um, no need for any additional nutrients when you start a seed as it contains all the needed resources for the plant. Um, and that's true. The seed itself has all the resources needed for the plant. But once it gets to a, a point of having its first true leaves, I think it is, mm -hmm. um, it does start needing some more resources than, say, a soilless or a, a coconut coir mix would provide to it. 
so I just I don't have the ability to really keep moving things around I don't have a lot of space so that's why I've done that okay uh, another that, question here that coconut well. that coconut core that stuff that's stuff. not like the uh, coconut mulch stuff I used was it it's different no, right? no okay no. It, it's, it's like this brown um, <laughs> and half nice farm can probably describe it a little bit better than I can but it's like this brown cake of stuff that you take and you break it and, and splinter it apart Kind of, you know those jiffy pellets? Yes, yeah. I've used often, they'll have coconut core as well, and you just kind of soak okay. it up, and it, it really expands once you soak it. Okay. Cool. Um, and you have a question here from a chili pepper. Um, how did you transplant out of the soil paper roll? I just, uh, or out of the toilet paper roll, sorry. I just ripped oh. it off when I used them. Oh, you took it off? <laughs> you mean like, okay, wait. Like, you just I, I would break yeah, I would have broken down just like her and ripped it off the plant and then just planted the soil piece. Really? See, we put the whole thing in. It broke down. Do you think that's bad? I don't think yeah. so. It's just recyclable I don't think it's bad. stuff. Yeah, we just planted the whole thing and um, we'll know, well, it, it stays in the ground as the plant grows. And then, um, you know, in the spring here, when we add more, usually manure or bunny poo whatever we end up putting in there and moving it around i never remember seeing any toilet paper rolls sitting in there so obviously it must and you probably have worms in the garden too and they're going to eat that as well mm -hmm. oh, the worms are going to go right in there and eat that yeah um so yeah chili pepper says she wasn't sure didn't know if it would break down fast enough for the roots um uh, well, you know, if you're using any, some people will use like the um the waxed cups Mm -hmm. I think oh. the waxed cups would probably not break down as quickly. So waxed cups, I would I would err on the side of caution and take a waxed cup off. I don't think it'll break down as quickly. Mm -hmm. But um, the toilet paper roll, roll, yeah, worms love that stuff. I don't see a problem with taking it off, although I probably would have just because that's me. Right. But um, I think that would go pretty quickly. Yeah. It gets um, They get pretty mushy before you end up getting them in the ground anyhow. They do the toilet paper. Uh, rolls already start I don't know maybe it's just the brand we buy I don't know but it it breaks down ours does so oh, this uh this here is paper Ooh. what I've used before which is this is tomato seedlings getting leggy again because I had really late frosts that year nice but this makes it really really easy because you can see I've just written on the cup on the outside and the cups are a little bit taller I try to find really skinny, tall ones. So if I do that, then um, I can plant the plant a little bit deeper and start getting a few more roots developed on it before I plant it outside, try to maybe help with some of the legginess. And then I put it there. And you can see that this is a different grow table than I may have shown earlier, because mm -hmm. it's not really a table. I have an unfinished ceiling in the basement in this one area. So I put some hooks or just some nails right in the ceiling. And I put some chains. You can see one chain at the far corner there hanging down. And I just keep inching the light upwards on those chains as needed. So it's just a little standalone light, just on a couple chains hanging from a couple nails. So um, again, people who are thinking that they need a really expensive grow table or they have to build a grow table, you don't. You just need somewhere where you can hang two chains on either side of a light and just a $20 shop light with some uh, full spectrum fluorescent bulbs and just raise it and lower it as you need to. You don't need a fancy setup at all. You can do it super cheap. Looks great. So that's uh, that's one thing I've done. It's not really the paper rolls, but it is kind of recycling because you always end up with all these cups everywhere. Okay, so Happy Dance Farm says the Moo Poo cups work fairly well for direct transplanting. Also supplies nutrients from the manure compost. The cup is made from. Um, I haven't heard of moo poo cups. <coughs> Are those the co the cup or cow yeah, pods or something? Kind of like they're they're a cow manure that's been pressed into a cup. Okay, I think somebody shared those from one of the uh, trade shows. Uh, yeah, when we did a blab thing. <laughs> I've, I've seen the quar ones. And I've also seen the uh, manure ones as well. Um, oh, I shied away from them for me because I have to have things growing indoors for so long um, before right. I can put them outside. Outside. Okay. But they're great. Yeah, I wonder if um, 
I recently shared a new, it's a startup company. It's on my blog. Now I forget the name of the product, but it actually has the, um, you know, the uh, nutrients and everything in the container itself. Um, that's oh, pretty cool. Yeah. That I remember seeing that. I'm just going to share something else here. Okay. Um, just because to talk about some supplies, this is something that is getting more popular. So some people might recognize these. We did share them in the chat earlier and what they are, they're soil block makers. So that little one makes these itty bitty soil blocks that you drop a seed into. And because there's no container around it at all, it's just soil entirely. Um, these roots will self, um, they'll kind of like air block themselves. So when they get to the side, I can't remember the exact word for it right now, but when they get to the side of the soil, they'll just kind of stop and they'll start developing stronger roots on the inside, like a larger root mass. And then okay. you can see the larger one, when you make a block out of that, the small one actually fits right into the middle. So you make a larger block and just drop the small block right in the middle and then the roots continue growing into the larger block. That's really cool. So I, they do take a bit of practice. Um, there's a lot of YouTube tutorials on making the soil blocks. I think I make mine a bit too compact. Um, I've had some trouble getting this going for myself, but it doesn't mean I'm going to stop. I obviously just need to uh, get a bit better at that. Huh. So, oh, Where'd you find that? Friends got the the uh, soil block makers? Yeah, that's you can cool. Get them at almost, you can get them in almost any um, large supplier. So even like Johnny Seeds would have them. That's cool. Almost any of the, they're not cheap. Um, I borrowed them from a friend who had them just to see if I like them. And obviously I need to do a bit more work with them to make them work really well for me, right. but uh, they're great. Oh yeah. Amazon eBay has them as well. They're just, uh, there's three sizes normally huh. or three sizes of block. And then you can get ones that are really, really, really big in the sense that they make a lot of blocks mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, they are, they are great. You don't even have to fuss with any sort of thing. You just stack all these blocks into a holder together and off you go. But um, I, I have not had as much luck as I wanted with them. So I've got to try a bit more work. Yeah. Maybe once I don't have my little niece collecting toilet paper rolls, I'll get something like that. <laughs> oh, and Scott mentioned uh, related to the vermicompost here. I add things like newspaper, pumice stone, crushed eggshells, coffee grounds to my vermicompost system. And that's absolutely true. Um, worms like some grit. Worms like a lot of brown material, like the roughness, like the newspapers and that. Mm -hmm. If all you're feeding your vermicompost is greens, which would be all of your vegetable matter and uh, any grass clippings are kind of in between, but you really, really need to add everything else in there. And yeah, pumice stone, like the, the dust is, is great grit. So um, we've got General Pumice down there who sells it and uh, they sell some great stuff. Really, really great stuff. Mm -hmm. So the uh the vermicompost is is absolutely awesome i should see if i can find a picture of the vermicompost system i use because i know that scott uses the same one um you don't need vermicompost for seed starting you don't i i would actually say that vermicompost is too strong for seed starting hmm. um you'd probably end up burning out the seedlings it's just it's really strong stuff okay. but once you transplant the seedlings into your gardens vermicompost is absolutely wonderful so I'm just going to see if I can find a picture of that system here. I absolutely love this system. I'm not sure if Scott wants to chime in at all, if he loves uh, his vermicompost system as well. But hmm. uh, I absolutely love it. Yeah, I'd like to learn more about that. I tell you, it gets so busy uh, that time, you know, when it's seed starting time. Oh, check that out. That's cool. Oh, Giovanna has one of those too, I think, on Twitter. I absolutely and That's you can see in the back corner there, I have stacks of uh, some seed starting material. That's cool. Look at that. Yeah, I, I absolutely love it. It's a vertical vermicompost system. So you just keep stacking it a layer on top. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it because we're not really talking about vermicompost today, but That's I cool. think another chat that would work because yeah. you could do winter composting all year long in a, a basement area with one of these systems when you're in the north because obviously outdoor composting freezes. Yeah. No, yes. But with one of these systems, I'm able to do vermicomposting all year long and it's, it's absolutely wonderful. I love it. 
That's very cool. Yeah, because like what I was saying is, you know, I get so busy this time of year. I mean, we've got, I like to go to some of the shows and I love stopping at the garden centers to see what they have going this time of year. You know what I mean? It's, it's like fun time, right? So it's easier for me just to go to the store and buy like an organic seed starting mix, you know? But yeah, I, I uh, make my own. That'd be cool though. You can make your own seed starting. That's cool. You absolutely can actually on some of the YouTube videos for the seed blocks. Mm -hmm. um, they also go through making your own. Okay. So that you make a mix to make with a seed blocker. So um, Kristen says her favorite tool in the greenhouse is my widger. Widger? Widger. Widger? Widger. Widger. Okay. That's how you and say that. The widger, I don't have a picture of one. Um, I don't know if Delta Gardener has one, mm -hmm. but um, it's great because you can just, you go right into your little seeds um, container or your little seedling container, pop the little seedling out and transplant it. Widgers are great little things. I don't nice. have one. I don't have them. They're, they are really wonderful little things though. Now Del uh, Delta Gardener, remind me. Yeah, there we go. Small stainless steel tool to pick seedlings out. And they're great. Widgers are absolutely great, especially if you're using soilless uh, media. I have like a little tool bag in the uh, greenhouse or now I have to move it into the dome. <laughs> and I have like just some utensils in there, like old utensils. <laughs> it's amazing what you can do with the old fork and an old butter knife, you know. It works good. It is. My butter knife... <laughs> is my tool for everything yeah you know there, there's your screwdriver there is your pry bar there is your right i mean butter knife that's right <laughs> so we do have a question here um very few windows for light any links you might have to cheapest best lighting setup for seed starting um i don't have any links i don't have a excellent setup um that would be a preset setup that would be a cheap one but as far as i would say if you have a spot even if you have just a um, clothes, clothes bar somewhere in a closet that you could put two chains on, get a $20 shop light, like just one of those two T12 fluorescent tubes, shop light, two pieces of chain that go up to that bar and a little $2 timer, you have a seed uh, growing area. That's all you would need. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't even have to be in a closet. It could just be out anywhere. As long as you have a spot to hang a $20 shop light with two bulbs in it, above your seeds so that you can keep it a couple inches above your seedlings and then just keep raising it as they get taller and grow. So it, it's super cheap. Um, I would use a full spectrum T12 fluorescent bulb um, or one that has more blue and red versus the other colors in it, but that's all you really need. Just a couple T12 full spectrum bulbs, um, a $20 shop light and a couple pieces of chain to hang it from. And if you don't wanna be turning it on and off yourself in the morning and night, get a little $5 timer and, and plug it in with that and you're set. That's all you need. I actually, um, when you put them in the basement, I, did you say that put them, Oh, we use set a closet or, um, I had closet, space basement. I use basement, but, um, I had, there's so many lights in my area that gets warmer. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's, that's problem. what I was going to say. The problem I had with that. Um, and I also, I bought just a cheapy little, it's probably about, four feet tall little greenhouse, like four by three little plastic greenhouse. I think it was like 25 bucks at the garden center. Right. And yeah. um, that kind of helped. Well, and in the bottom, I put like a, a big tray that you can find at Home Depot that I think people use like for under air conditioning units and things like that. Like, you know, just go in the plumbing area, you'll find like a big tray. I sat that down, put the greenhouse on top of it in the basement. And then I have um, the LED lights, um, uh, th which produce some heat. But like when I started doing tomatoes and peppers in the basement, they really needed more heat. So you might want to consider your closet instead of like what you were saying. Or like I have mine up in my office here. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So th this here, the freezer generates heat just like the oh, fridge would generate. Smart. Right. 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 Um, so yeah. nice. for the short period of time that I need there, and mm -hmm. I can't really point it out right here, but um, you can see in the sides. Yeah. Those are just two nails in the ceiling, like I was mentioning to people earlier, um, that the chains are hanging off of. It's literally two nails in the ceiling, two pieces of chain, and a $20 shop light. 
Nice. And they're amazing. I have actually, a, I have two shop lights side by side there just because I, I like to put my flats lengthwise, but yeah. you don't have to worry about that. So just a quick picture of what it might look like. And it doesn't have to be obviously on a freezer. It could be anywhere that it's not going to get too cold. Mm -hmm. Like Bren was uh, bringing up, which is a very important point. Yeah. And we have another question here I brought up from Kristen. Anyone use no hole flats for under plants? Great for inside to hold water and avoid leaking on tables. That's exactly what I was using in that picture. I love no hole flats because I can water from underneath. Um, watering from underneath, I think, uh, Kristen, you mentioned that earlier um, in the Twitter chat. Super important because then you don't end up with all the damping off or the extra mold or the water sitting on your seed things leaves. Um, you'd you'd want to try to avoid that if you can. Yeah, sounds good. I just shared a link with uh, Cheryl. actually had a friend uh, who grows with lights, not LED lights, but... Um, he did a guest post on my um, website. So if you click over there, he had nice, great information. That can be kind of f confusing trying to mimic the sun and stuff, right? A little bit. Oh, absolutely. Just me. And unless you want to put a lot of money into it, like Scott uh, was discussing, I think he said he had a thousand watt power supply when he was doing his halide system to grow tomatoes inside in the winter. Um, that's, getting closer to mimicking sun because it's the amount of the intensity of the photon energy. So the concentration of it hitting mm -hmm. um, fluorescent lights provide, you know, one or two per area. If you want to try and just give it an example, whereas, you know, a halide light is could be giving you know, like 10, 20, 50 to the same area in the same amount of time. And uh, so fluorescent lights, you're not going to grow tomatoes under them in the winter. They're perfectly enough to grow your seedlings. They're not going to get you any fruit. No, get any fruiting peppers or flowers but um if you want to put a lot of money into it you can get the halide lights and try to mimic the sun there you go so, very cool not something i'm interested in i don't want to put a lot of money into it yeah and you don't need it like we started the lab off saying mm -hmm. um bren had the perfect example you don't need it she had i mean yeah. I, I love that i love that system do you have the link to your blog post about it can you post um, that i can share that yeah i actually um yeah. And you could get all sizes because actually, you know what, way back in like 2007, before I got my first greenhouse, right, um, that's all I used to use. In fact, I here's another one, like a bigger, a larger lettuce container, and that really helped hold the heat in, you know, just put your starters in there. And uh, I used to just sit that in the, um, well, it's like the south not direct sun. I mean, you don't want direct sun. They dry out, right? Yeah. <laughs> like and you also want to have hard. a lid that comes off. Yeah. Um, yeah, the lid comes off. Otherwise, I mean, if you leave your humidity lids on your trays or your seed start trays or anything like that, mm -hmm. um, the you're going to end up with fungus, damping off issues, things like that. So right. once the seedlings have all sprouted, Sorry. you're going to want to take the... Um, Sorry. <laughs> Take the covers off. No, it's okay. It's okay. And then, um, oh, you know, something else I did too, because um, I, I'm, sometimes I get a little frustrated planting in the little cells. Like you get those, I call them 606s. You know, your little, hold on, whoop, these things, right? Yeah. Like yeah. Okay. So, these get a little frustrating. I end up putting like way too many seeds in one of these. <laughs> and then you're going to transplant it anyways, right? So what I did this year, though, I have a container going where I actually took two of these and I put it inside. You know, it's going to go inside. Tray's going to go inside there. But this one that's going inside has holes so water can drain through it. Right, I'm right. Just putting, That's an awesome idea. Yeah, and I'm just putting soil in here and just putting the seeds in there, just scattering them as as they come up. I'm just, just like mass planting. Yes, mass planting. I'm just gonna, you know, trans, you know, take a little butter knife <laughs> and um, transplant them instead of, you know, that gets a little frustrating. Although I sometimes. have a feeling that this spring you're gonna have a widger, aren't you? I would have to check that out. <laughs> What do you got going that, there? That looks good. Well, that's just another example of like those multi-pack things. Um, and I reuse them year after year. And I know some people say they wash them out. 
Yeah. I must be the laziest person ever. <laughs> I don't. I don't even wash them out. I just grab them, jam more soil in them in the in uh, seed start time and start using them. And you know what? I don't have damping off issues. Huh. That's pretty And cool. uh, Chili Pepper here says, I did mass planting of those salad containers last year, but love your container and container idea. That is an awesome idea, Bren. It really is. Yeah. Just remember to kind of pull it up and check and make sure those holes are actually draining, right? But uh, so far, it's working great. You could probably put a couple, you know, butter knives underneath it to lift it up if they're not quite draining. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. So. A great idea. Um, da, 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 let's see. Where are we? Da. Well, it looks like um, yeah. we're, we're actually doing well. Please explain mass planting. Brenda, do you want to explain mass planting? <laughs> as far as like with seeds? Yeah, just what it is. What are you talking about? What have you done in that container when you say mass planting? Yeah, so I'm just spreading the seeds in um, in that container, you know, just kind of just space they're it all not, out, right? They're not separated at all, yeah. No, no, you just kind of be careful and sprinkle them in there. That's how I plant my lettuce, actually. I mean, you're not going to take one seed and do it in each little cell. I just kind of sprinkle them, just a big, all one variety, all one type of seed mass planting you'll see it in landscapes like you ever look out and you see like a mass plant like just a whole area of russian sage or something that's pretty popular in ohio mass planting right yeah i'm trying to see if i can find a picture to share of mass planting that was sprouted but i don't have one um but yeah it basically is i mean you have your tray of soil mm -hmm. and exactly like bren said you take all of your seeds and you just sprinkle them in. You're not doing an individual seed per individual divided container. Right. And then, yeah, exactly. You thin and then transplant. Exactly. Take the strongest ones out, transplant them into something, and off you go. And exactly. It makes a quick use of a large seeding season. Because if you take an individual ones and done 200 of them into individual holes, yeah. you're going to end up with weak ones growing, right? And now you've oh. wasted the space that you could have used. Whereas if you've mass planted it, you're only going to pull your big ones out. Exactly. Happy Nuts Farms has mentioned here, mass planting is also what you would do for microgreens. Wheatgrass is a common one planted in that manner. Exactly. Um, so I have, this isn't a wheatgrass, but this would have been mass planted when you see it. This is actually um, a banker plant that has a very specific variety of aphid on it that I use to maintain my biocontrols. So my parasitoid wasps would infect these aphids, but these aphids won't go and infect my other plants. But that, that's exactly it. That would be a mass planting right there. Huh. You would not let one like Bren is doing grow to this level. <laughs> no. <laughs> you would definitely pull out those seedlings yeah. when they're small. I meant but and, grass, you would do this way. Yeah. And some seeds, you know, like tomatoes or things like that, if they get, well, tomatoes are pretty hardy. That's a bad example. Um, I don't know. There's some seeds that, I mean, you wouldn't want them to get too big and try to transplant them because they probably wouldn't do so well, right? Yes. Beets would not do well. Beets, oh, they have their taproot system. Yeah. yeah. Um, carrots, their taproot system. Mm -hmm. Parsnips, their taproot system. Anything that's like that, you're not going to want to do. But uh, a lettuce is a fibrous root. A tomato is a fibrous root. Um, they're, they're fine. But yeah. taproots, you would not want to mass plant and then try to move around. Sure. sure. Like my lettuce. My lettuce is mass planted too in those. I have vertical gardens that I share in the uh, geo desic biodome and they're just uh, just sprinkle them on and then I go in with the shears and do a little haircut and go have some lunch. <laughs> oh, Scott's got something actually here to share too Ooh, for us. Wow. A good clarification. Metal halide bulbs will not bring your plants to the fruiting stage, but sodium metal halide bulbs will. It's more expensive to run these lights, but it's wicked awesome to grow tomatoes, peppers, cukes, etc. in the winter. I've done this with hydroponics and it's fun stuff. Okay. And it really is. I mean, I wish I could do that. Um, but I kind of probably have that same affliction that all gardeners have. Mm -hmm. Ooh, let me grow more stuff all yeah. the time. Yeah. And yeah. So same problem. I, I would definitely be growing everything all the time if I mm -hmm. was allowed. <laughs> and my husband really hasn't said no yet. So I wonder how far I can push right. it. I really wonder how far I could push it. <laughs> well. <laughs> <coughs> So for people who joined in halfway through, mm -hmm. um, I just want to reiterate, um, I'm Pam from Growing North, and we have Bren hosting with us here today from um, 
what is what is the 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 blog called? Uh, my blog is actually Creative Living and Growing, but if you just go to brennhaas.com. Brenhaas.com, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll type that into the side there, brenhaas.com. Mm -hmm. And Bren also runs Garden Chat on Twitter yeah. every single Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, and we essentially started off saying that you don't need all of the fancy, fancy equipment to grow seeds. Um, I would love to see people who have never started seeds indoors grab a container that will hold some soil or soilless, even like the quar, even the jiffy pellet, whatever, mm -hmm. throw a seed into it, stick it in a window and grow something. Because yeah. really that's what you got to do. You do not need everything fancy. Yeah, just and, try it. Um, yeah, just, just try, try it. it. Seeds are cheap. They're cheap. I can remember, I start all kinds of things and maybe half of them actually work, but I learned, you know, and I mean, one time I started this particular uh, perennial, I can't even remember which one it was, but I, I just remember I started it indoors and I didn't know somebody gave me some seeds and started them and yeah. it got too wet. And then I just took the pile of soil because it didn't work indoors. So I threw them outside. And next thing I know, I've got these beautiful flowers coming up. <laughs> so yeah, just just do it, you know. Seeds are amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're gonna have a fussy seed, just like you're gonna have a fussy person. But the way I view it is like, well, seeds kind of know what they're doing better than we do. Yeah. So if you just kind of let them do their thing, they're probably gonna do it. Um, so it don't do not ever ever be scared to try planting a seed and growing it. Okay. Definitely. Do not get confused by everything you think you need to have. You need some soil, water, and light. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and Happy Dance Farm here has said LED. So LED lights are so simple now. You can tailor the light spectrum for greens fruiting off the same setup, which reduces costs. And LEDs produce much less heat than halide bulbs with less electricity cost. And I am so tempted to go and get yeah. some LEDs. I really, really, really want to, but yeah. I just... I've got my little $20 system yeah. hooked up in the basement and it's working. So maybe, maybe in a couple of years, I'll do it. The technology, the technology is amazing. And even in our home, my husband's been going nuts because they've gotten so cheap. Like, you know, he goes to pick up light bulbs and he comes home, you know, it might, this new bulb he got, I think it costs like 12 bucks, but it's supposed to last like 30 years. And the yeah, like $12 over 30 years. What's that? Yeah, and then but the light that comes from them now just it's amazing. Even just over the past five years, you know how much you know you know what I mean. I well, I your cell phone just needed a briefcase, right? Yeah, and that's now, right. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> right. Yeah, like it was the briefcase. You'd put the briefcase down, or you'd open it. And you'd... I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Um, yeah, you know another cool tool or um, supply you need with the seeds. <coughs> now you know obviously some seeds, like there's some flowers. You know we still I love growing flowers still. Um, geraniums and petunias, they're so much fun to grow from seed. Now those I wouldn't so much mass plant. I actually a good tool for that is tweezers. Just use tweezers. I have like a little saucer. Now, actually, the saucer came from the seed keeper kits. Um, if you follow the seed keepers on um, on Twitter, Carrie and Carol, and um, I think I might be the one that kind of gave them the idea about tweezers. Yes, there you go. Same idea, just simple. Yeah, you know? that's that's what I've always used. Tweezers. I've tried. I have like three or four different ones. I've got like the little air bubble ones with the different tips on it. Uh -huh. and all of these different ones. And you know what? That pair of tweezers right there is what I always go back to. That's cool. Strawberries. So did you grow strawberries from seed? Oh, yes. Yes. They're great. I've never done that. I've seen a lot of people do that. And I just, yeah, they're great. I got to try that. Actually, what you see above there is the smallest seed block. That's what you get out of the smallest seed block. Oh, wow. That's cool. Check that out. Yeah. Hey, guys, give, give Pam some props there. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, I've got I'm going to give you some props. Um, and so we've got here another question from a chili pepper. Do you both plant seeds that need yes. to be chilled? I haven't tried the chilling process. Um, so another way of, of saying that is stratified. Do you need to, do you grow plants that need to be stratified? Mm -hmm. um, I have not really done that. I've done some. I've done some trees. 
that need to be stratified. I've done some fruits and a lot of fruits need to be stratified. Um, but the easiest way to do that, honestly, especially because we have the benefit of being in the north, <laughs> you take the seeds, you put them into some some seed in the, the or into some soil in little containers in the winter. You seal them up in one of those little plastic containers that uh, Bren ha- was showing us. Yeah. And you take it out and you bury it in a snowbank. <laughs> <laughs> and in the spring, they will know exactly what they want to do. So, um, yeah, I would say go ahead and try it. Stick them into some soil. Stick it into the... Um, into a snowbank where it's going to yeah. get some nice early spring sun and be and be nice and uh, and taken care of right. and just let the seeds do their own thing and you might be surprised some of them are probably going to try growing yeah yeah i want to try some of that um winter sowing or what i think that's what it's called uh miriam i talked to miriam this week labs with miriam up there in canada i don't know if you caught that um she was doing like perennial wildflowers and you put them in containers now out in the snow well not in the snow but set them out the winter sowing the winter yes. sowing idea yeah yeah i think uh, delta gardener said she's been doing that now that's cool i i you know what i love the winter sowing idea i haven't done as much of it yet i've done it some of it with the uh, stratified seeds just because i'm lazy <laughs> and the seeds know what they need to do. And I have the benefit of having a frozen area. So I just like, stick it out there, it'll get warm later. Um, but I, I really love the idea of the winter sowing. It's using nature and using the processes that have been developed in nature to do exactly what nature wants to do. Mm-hmm. I, I really love it. Very cool. So. Oh, and uh, Happy Dance Farms here says, I do that with shiitake logs. Toss them out in the cold after they are spore plugged. And just let them do their thing. Let nature take its course. You know, I have one of those. I started it. Maybe they could help me a little bit with that Happy Dance Farm. Um, I got one of those um, mushroom logs, soaked it. But this was like in late October. I'll have to look at the date. And it says it takes like six, 12, wait, yeah, six months, six months. I'll have to look at the directions again. Come spring, it's supposed to be ready to produce. Um. I wondered if the cold was going to affect it because I started the log so late. Does that, am I making sense? I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you ever done one of, one of those before? You know, you soak the log. Yeah. yeah, you soak the log. And then it's a kit. You can get it through gardener supply. It's pretty cool. And so, but then I read the directions after I soaked it and it's August, you know, it's no it's <coughs> October and I live in Ohio. It's like, oh man, we're going to, it's going to snow. So it's out by my patio garden. In fact, I looked at it the other day. Um, Of course, there's no mushrooms yet. Um, They will need to be kept cold as well for a period of time. Oh, so it should be fine. I was thinking about cheating and taking the log and putting it into my dome. Like I do have like a shaded area um, where I kind of have a, yeah. You think it would work to like speed up the process? The happy Dance Farms would have a better idea than I would. Yeah. I've never done them, but I'm I'm always of the thing of try it. Do it. I know. Try I just it. I don't want to lose my log. I'm pretty excited about growing mushrooms because I love mushrooms. Um, Bren, you just like to grow things. I know I do, and you know what? <laughs> Actually, I took um, I should I need to share this on a Periscope or something. I had a whole bunch of lavender seeds. And I never had much luck starting them indoors or even when I would sprinkle them out in the greenhouse. I don't know if it, or start, excuse me, out in the garden. I don't know if it was just the variety I was using, but I just never had luck with the lavender. Well, there's this little section in the dome and I just kind of scattered all those seeds that never worked. (laughs) They're actually coming up. (laughs) I may have like a big lavender field. (laughs) That's exactly it. Let the seeds do what the seeds want to do. They know right. what they're doing. Yeah. Working. I don't know. Like I said, dome. <laughs> so. but, uh, what I'm going to say here is we're getting close to 11. So I am super pumped with everyone who's hung out here and asked questions and given us, you know, advice and on the mushrooms and on the lights and 
I mean, there's just been so much coming in here in the winter sewing. I'm really, really happy with all of that. I love learning in the blabs as well. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the one who knows everything. So I'm really, really glad that people remind me that and tell me everything. I love it. Yeah. Um, and I want to say super huge thanks to Bren and your props. I loved your props. Thank you so much <laughs> for bringing those. Did you grab uh, your blog post about the recycled seed saving? Yes, I see. I shared that just a little bit ago. Great. Um, I can share it again, but yeah, that was fun. I just kind of took some pictures of what I've got going on. Got a whole bunch of little stuff. I just grow all over the place. <laughs> Are you like that too? <laughs> I, I try to as well. Um, sometimes it just yeah. kind of gets picked up when I'm not looking and moved back into the area that's supposed to be where I'm growing. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. So I threw a picture up there. Hopefully that's going to get people thinking to, uh, to start planning their spring gardens. Um, we've got a long time to wait here where I am, but not everybody lives where I am. So hopefully people are planning away and getting their seed catalogs out and getting going. And uh, if you get your seed catalogs out now mm -hmm. and start saving up those K-cups that Bren was showing us, yeah. um, you should be ready very, very soon to start getting your seed started. Yeah. I even, uh, I started some canna, canna, you know, the flower, the big flower. I started them from seed. That's fun. I grow all kinds of stuff. Can you believe that? I never, that was like a few years ago when I first grew. This is a little seed and it grows into this big, giant, beautiful flower. And uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Exciting. I, I honestly, I don't know as much about flowers. I know companion flowers. If they keep okay. the bugs away or they yeah. attract the bugs so that the bugs don't go to the other plants, or if right. they're really good for the roots of this plant, or that's, I, all my yeah. plants are either edible or companion plants. And um, so Smart. I have a lot of learning to do on flowers. Yeah, I'll have to. Actually, I'll tweet you a picture of that because I've got some really pretty pictures. Somebody in the chat room just asked for a photo. And that's a very important point about, okay, so I planted those canna flowers. You know, I just, I was so excited. Wow, I grew these from seed. You know, usually you buy the big roots or the, the tuber and plant it right well do not plant that next to eggplant because <laughs> all the ladybugs the bad ladybug like love the canna plant and you and they like eggplant too so so you bad. just attracted everything oh into yeah one spot. <laughs> it was you bad i was over there picking them off and oh it was horrible yeah not good <laughs> so got a question in here from Cheryl idea for companion plants to attract grasshoppers that's what I haven't looked at yet so um I should look into that actually and, and see what I can find out because I'm not sure and that would actually be interesting because I find I have little baby grasshoppers in my summer greenhouse yes. every single spring and I put my nice happy little you know mm -hmm. hardened off peppers in there and the grasshoppers think it's you know mealtime yeah. So I definitely need to look into the grasshopper one. Normally I've just kind of been going through and, and picking them off. <laughs> I really don't yeah. like them. I'm trying to think I don't like... find them on all the time. They seem to like to remember, well, you know, I'll have to look at my pictures that I take of the grasshopper, then you'll know what they like sitting on. It seems like they like my geraniums or something. I find they're on my peppers. I, I, I've not found a single thing that they're specifically on i think they've just been going to whatever is provided because in yeah. where i am um when they hatch out i think they're going to whatever's green yeah just because they're hungry and not everything's green yet but um, i need to look into that i i really don't know grasshoppers yeah and uh, happy dance farm here said uh he does hydro aqua fog ponics at a greenhouse in colorado which is so exciting i don't know any of that cool. stuff. that's very so cool. my experience in soil is somewhat limited more info is always good for me yeah and Scott yeah, says it's oh. grasshoppers in the garden. You know, you're making me worry a little bit. I have a, I had a cricket that's in the dome, and I haven't heard him. Or a grasshopper. Oh, I'm pretty. Oh, I'm pretty sure. Oh, <laughs> it could be bad. But <laughs> on a brighter note, what I was gonna say was I haven't heard him <laughs> since we got like down into the single digits. It, you know, and, and I know some parts of the dome it got kind of cold. <coughs> I'm thinking maybe he didn't make it, so maybe he was bad. Or he hibernated, or he was at the end of his life. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was a cricket. Do you remember hearing that, Scott? I have it on a couple of videos. <laughs> He's just singing away in the dome. <laughs> the cricket. 
I'm pretty sure it was totally a cricket. Cricket then. Crickets, crickets are okay. Yeah, yeah like Scott said, crickets yeah. are okay. Yeah, right. Um, heard about bioproducts to treat soil for grasshoppers. Hmm. Um, no, but I have heard a lot of people who use um, nematode to treat grubs. So I'm wondering if the grubs are are um, grasshopper babies, larva. So um, I'm wondering if that's it. But I know that they're very, very effective against um, Japanese beetle, things like that. Okay. Um, nematode treatments of your grass and lawn. I haven't used them, but I've heard all very, very positive reviews on them. So I just, my, my grass is only green so sh such a short time of the year. I don't have too many worries. <laughs> yeah. Other than it's white, white, lots of white. Well, this is fun. We're going to have to talk more about, um, let's see, we got the seed starter stuff, supplies. We should talk about seeds. What are you doing next week? <laughs> I'm not sure. I've got a few topic suggestions. I'm probably going to throw it out on Twitter and see if there's a big resounding anything, but maybe we could talk about seed catalogs. Yeah. Cause you know what? I haven't got many seed catalogs this year, which is my own fault. I never sign up for them. I usually just go online, but sometimes it's kind of nice to look at the catalogs too. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's a definite idea. I'm going to see what the uh, feeling out is on Twitter and see if people want to talk seed catalogs. That'd be great. Cause uh Definitely for northern growers, you want short season stuff and not every catalog carries it. Yeah. So I think we're going to sign off for tonight, though. Yeah. Scott has said goodbye. Really, really <laughs> glad to have had him here. And yeah, um, super happy that everyone else was able to join us. Um, hope you can join us again next week on Twitter and on Blab. Um, Twitter, we start at 9 o'clock with a whole pile of questions. And then we come over to Blab so that we can take any questions you might have. So. I'll just say good night to everybody. Please enjoy your evening. Enjoy good your night. week. Don't, don't <laughs> freeze. Yeah.